Show. Gentlemen, we are here to present to you how, how our mommy gets when she's angry. <laughs> she said, <"Dini." laughs> Hello. Hello. My mommy says when she's angry is Omake. Oh, what my mom says when she's angry is Kuna Sibel. My mom says when she, what my mom says when she's angry is that you could be you know I won before I beat you, I'll beat you. What's my mom what, what's my mom says when she's angry? What about me new yara? What my mom is what my mom says when she's angry is are you stupid? What what my mom says when she's angry? Don't go busy with it. What my mom says when she's angry? What my mom says when she's angry, I'll slap you and I'll slap you hard. What my mom says when she's angry. So I just in bin see my lue be wure. I like yet to say the way uh, the reason why we love our mommy. Because she's kind and caring. What my mom used to say when she's the reason why I love her because she showed love and affection. I I love my mom because she carried me for nine months. I love my mom because she's so kind and caring. I love my mom because she showed me what sexual friendship looks like. And and she I love my mommy because she tells me what is right and wrong. I love my mommy because she's honest. I love my mom because she gives me food to eat. I love my mom because of she brought me to this world and taught me what is right. I love my mom because she knows what's right for me. Thank you. <laughs> What's that for the children? Mothers in the house, let's appreciate them. Mothers in the house, let's appreciate the children. Presentation is Yoruba. Yoruba. Our Lopo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am a Yoruba. You are a Yoruba.
I'm always glad when it's time for her to minister to us. And this is none other than my beautiful, wonderful Mrs. Shay. It's all about God. It's all about this morning. I just want us to just bless. Just thank the Lord from the depth of your heart. A man, I just a man or a woman, just give God praise from your heart this morning. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for life. 
I'm grateful for provision. I'm grateful for our nation, Nigeria. I'm grateful for everything that you have done in this church, Stone Church Worldwide, Stone Church Lagos, Stone Church Aguda. Every individual will come to say thank you this morning. Father, we appreciate you. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we exalt. It's all about you. All glory to you. Nothing about self this morning. Let your name alone be glorified. Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's have a beautiful seat. Thank you so much. I, I want to um, thank my pastor for the privilege, you know. I also want to thank the women of virtue for this um, privilege. When Pastor Mrs. said, I ain't let my minister, I, I, I really didn't want to worry. I was like, what? Let me just stay in my small corner and just be doing my thing. You know? But just like, she said that she just moved on. And I was like, okay, let me, let God just have your way. I'm grateful for that opportunity. This morning, I also want to thank the Pastor Mrs. for something that she did this morning. You know that? Why is Chimuzo? I want you or this thing. Praise the The promises she told us to pick. Before I joined Stone Church, I was going to a church, and in that church, this is a regular thing picking promises. On Thursday, when I go for their Thursday service in the morning, we usually pick promises. And you know one thing, the first day I was, um, I already met my husband then, we were still caught in, and um, I was, I told that I wanted to go to their house. He didn't say to me, I went there on my own. He had gone to work, I said I was going to their house. He said, you can go. My mother had not, had not met me, nobody had met me. So I went to church that day, and I said, God, I know what you have said, but I just want you to confirm what you have said. I went to church that Thursday and we picked a promise. So when I picked this promise, I was like, God, a eh. And I picked Ruth 2, 14. I've said it in this place before. And I picked Ruth 2, 14. And the scripture is... That I confirm to me fully. Don't they just jump and say, I'm going to one boy's house. I'm going to say, nothing is there. <laughs> You know, when I picked that scripture, it was Ruth 2, and it says, And Boaz said unto her, At meeting time, come down hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy muscle in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and reaped, and he reaped her patched corn, and she did eat, and was satisfied, and looked. You know, Ruth um, was winning, um, picking the remains from Boaz's farm, and Boaz saw her, and encouraged her, and eventually they got married. So it was an assurance for me. Gave me so much confidence to go to my mother in laws house without my husband. So what I'm, I said that to let you know that the promise that you have pleased is the word of God. The Bible says nothing shall be impossible with God. Nothing, not a word that God has spoken will fall to the ground. So every promise that you have, hold it diligently. I don't know what you picked, but whatever you picked, hold on to it is the word of God. Come back next year with your testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. That's not my message at all. That was just the side. Before I even, even let us read this morning, see, I'm going to talk about women, 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 but the other fact is everybody can pick their own. But because it's women, I probably said it's women that we are going to gist and talk. Men you can tap into. Because we, we are specially created human beings. Hallelujah. So women, please bring out your Bibles and your paper. But I'll be saying women, women. If you men, men want to pick, pick. If they don't want to pick, pick out your Bible and paper and write all these things. So that these are things you know. I, I want to start from the end this morning. Woman, know of the shorty that you are loved. Ephesians 2, 4 to 6. You are loved. I want to shower women because at times you feel maybe your husband hurt and you're like, nobody loves you again. Still loves you. He loved you. Women, woman, you are specially crafted. Ephesians 2, 10. You are specially.
handicrafted in Ephesians 2 10. Woman, you are blessed already. Ephesians 1 3. You are blessed already. Man, you are called. Second Timothy one nine. You are called. Oh. You are going through. Not alone. You are being reconciled. Second Corinthians five fourteen to twenty one. You are being reconciled. Don't limit God. That story, it talks about when um, Moses went to God and said, The people Twenty one to twenty three, don't limit God. Number, I don't know the number now, but the just shall live by faith. We must To me to come and pray with me, woman, live by the of God and run with that word. I just need to give us this thing so that even because I'm not getting, I picked up on my message and I said, I'm going to give you through them. We we'll come back next year with our testimonies. Hallelujah! So, reading. The books you are going to Bibles or technical, please, if you can help us this morning. Look, depending upon you for the timing, I didn't check the time, but look, um, chapter 7. Chapter 7 to 50. Let's just look at it. Standing B. Okay, let me start from 37. She found out that he was inclined that the head and respectfully kissed his feet as an act of signifying both affection. To sing, Jesus, in the thoughts of the Pharisee, teacher, say it. And he told him a story. A certain money lender had two debtors, one that had 400 denarii and the other 50. When they had no means of repaying the debt, he really forgave them both. So, which of them will love him? Some answered. The one I take it for whom he 
forgive men. Whom he forgave more. Jesus said to him, You have decided correctly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house, but you failed to extend to me the usual courtesies shown to a guest. You gave me no water for my feet, but I had wet my feet with her tears and wiped them here, demonstrating love. You be no welcoming, welcoming kiss, but from the moment I came in, she had not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not even anoint my head with ordinary oil, but she has anointed my feet with costly and rare perfume. Therefore I say to you, the sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Those who were reclining at the table with him then began saying amongst themselves, Who is this one that even forgives sin? Her sins was forgiven because she worshipped God. She submitted herself to God. We are going to look at another woman this morning. I want us to open our Bibles also. Turn to Luke 8. Luke 8. From verse 1 to 3. Soon afterwards, Jesus began going around from city to city, village to village, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve disciples were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil. And Joanna, wife of household steward, and Susanna, and many others who were contributing to their support out of their private means as the custom of Christ's disciples. They were women, but they were serving the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to also look um, 10, 38, Luke 10, 38. to 42 thereabouts now while they were on their way jesus entered a village called a sister named mary who seated herself at the lord's feet and was continually was busy and distracted with all Tell her to help me and do her part. But the Lord replied to her, You are worried about necessary for that which is advantage to her. I'm reading about women for a purpose. Luke 13, 11 to 16. And immediately she stood erect and began glorifying and praising God. Hallelujah. 
we're talking about Place, not moving forward, not knowing what to do. Oh, yeah, like that man serving the Lord. I'm always there on Saturday. I'm always Maybe you are of age and you are not married. Don't lose focus. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will not change. He's a good father. He, that's why I need to tell. I needed to just let us know from the end that you are loved. That God loves you. No matter where we are, what is happening, God loves us. So look at yourself. And tell yourself, God loves me. I'm not pastor. You are not a woman. I'm talking to women. Ah, pastor, you, you know your pastor. He quickly said it. Women, look at yourself and say, God loves me. Pastor, men, I did not say you. I said, I said, I'll be calling women today. Women, look at yourself and say, God loves me. God loves me very much. I am the apple of the eyes of the Lord. God loves me. You know when my husband is trying to do shakara to me, I just tell him my husband, God loves me. He says, so me, I don't love you. I say, God loves me, Shah. You know? It's good to let yourself know that God loves you. When you know that somebody loves you, you are assured. You are fully assured. When we say God loves you, it's not just one person that is somewhere. I mean God, the owner of the earth and the fullness thereof. He's mindful of you, 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 me. Each one of us is mindful of us. Don't let us leave that anyhow. No matter what you are going through, Bible says, I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but I will fear no evil. Why? Because he's with me. So I don't know what the pain is. Just tell the devil, God loves me. And because God loves me, I have the best. Therefore, I will flourish like a palm tree. Like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. Therefore, everything is working together for my good. You just need to know that God loves you. And when you know that God loves you, we are not talking to ourselves. Would you want to hurt him? If you know that God loves you, would you want to hurt him? Would you want to do anything bad to someone that loves you? So because you love God, every step that you need to take to walk towards continual fellowship, we must not forget them. That's why I said we must be focused. He loves us. So all the steps we need to take, you've been coming to church and it feels like nothing is happening. Don't worry, stay there. You've been calling on him and it seems like it's not just adding together. Just stay there. If all of us were to come here and come and be talking, nobody would live here today of things that we have gone through, we are going through, that is so challenging, that is so pressing. But I just want you to know that God loves you. That's number one. God loves you. Because the women that followed Jesus, they were ministering to him from their resources. Because they saw the love of God. They were going with him. They saw the love of God. That is number one thing. That's the first thing that gives us freedom. Devil will come. Always come. It is natural for him. Because the Bible says the devil goes about like a lion. Roaring. Seeking whom he might devour. But no child of God that he loves you. That will not change. That is freedom for every child. The Bible says he reconciled us to himself. 
called us to himself adopted us as his beloved so i don't want us to 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 lose focus number one god loves me number two is knowing who you are in christ do you know who you are in christ i was asking one of my sisters like two weeks ago that who are you who are you, in, who are you? I can't remember her response. I was, I was just laughing at that. But the thing is, who are you? Ask yourself, who am I? Do you know who you are? Like, to ask somebody now. Somebody will say, ah, I am a Mrs. Something. I am a Luashe. I am something. Yeah, that is not you. Who are you is who you are in Christ. That is where you set to yourself. If you are still thinking yourself, if you ask you now, I'm going to say my name is Shei. Mm -mm, I will not tell you that. Too. I will tell you I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That is to say, devil cannot even try to come in. By the time you are still defining yourself by your name, uh, you are long, you are far away. But when you define yourself by who says you are, then you are standing. Then you cannot be oppressed. Then nothing can come and press you down. What is your definition of yourself? What scripture are you calling you? Mom say, ah, but well, see, Lord, that, that, as they, everything is just in upside down. I will never say it. Even let things not be going the way I want, I will always confess the right things. What the word of God says is who I am. Let money not be in my pocket. I will say, ah, I will buy it. Even now I'm saying, ah, I don't think I can afford it. Quickly, I will change my mind. I will change my tongue. Because Baal says, on this tongue, on this tongue, is power of life and death. The Bible says we will eat the fruits of our lips. So if you are not careful what you say, you will have what you say. And that's the truth. I learned that lesson a very hard way. People that know the reason, know the reason. I learned it the very solid way. When you keep saying something, and you keep saying something, and you keep saying something, my sister, my brother, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. So you must be careful what you say. You must be very careful what you say. Know who you are in Christ. You are not defined by the name that you bear. You are defined in Christ Jesus for every believing child of God. The moment you confess Christ, as your savior you are in him you become a member of the body of christ that cannot change for a believer except you don't hold on to that which you have but i want to encourage you that which you have jesus you have don't go back know who you are in christ your value is in christ your value is in christ Starts to begin to think for that scripture that you begin to pray for yourself every day. That scripture you begin to say to yourself every day so that you can be what you are supposed to be. Children, you are so young, teenagers in the house. Pick up one word, one scripture, and begin to run with it. See that glorious feeling. Somebody was telling me, it was Sister Ifi that was telling me about one woman. Since her daughter was a small girl, she would keep telling that daughter that would. It is you that will take me to London. It is you that will take me to. She was just praising that daughter. Today, that woman is living with her daughter somewhere. And she's the one that took her. And miracle things just work and she's been saying it. When she was saying it, she was just saying it just to praise daughter so that your daughter will do work. You are the child that will know what you say. So, mom is in the house. I want us to mold our children. with our words let our value in Christ not the fact that they must have some people as their friends until I want to belong it should not be our children they belong to the kingdom of God and we use the word of God to mold our children a woman that knows her value and her worth will put value on her in the word of God and her children will turn out right If a mother is her children, the that we have in our society today is because the mothers failed in 
responsibilities. And sincerely, most it's a privilege. Changes. Want you to see yourself as don't do that. Anyhow, please do cut word of God. Word of God. I am in Christ. Why should you know who you are? If you should ask to six, he said with Christ when we believed and sit us with him in heavenly places. Raised us up together with Christ and made us sit together with Christ in heavenly places. Where are you seated? Where are you? When he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right time in heaven, far above principalities and power, your value is in Christ Jesus, and you and I have been raised with him. You and I have been made to sit together with him in heavenly places. And you and I are far above principalities and powers and minds and dominion. Therefore, devil should not have. It's important for us to know our value. We are sitting with Christ, raised together with him because we are a member of his body. When the circumstances come, you should tell them, shut up. I am seated in heavenly places in Christ. And I am raised far above you. Situation, you cannot torment me. That is knowing your value. Do you understand? That is knowing your value. You must know who you are in Him. Knowing our value leads us to destination, whatever we want to get to. Why? Because in our God, we can do all things. With Him, we can do all things. Whether there is money or no money, we are still going, we are still flourishing, we are still blossoming. Some people feel it's all about money, money, money in my hand. It's much more than that. At times, I will just be laughing because I just remember the scripture. When I remember something like Second Timothy that one nine that says, I've been saved and I've been called with the holy calling. When I remember First Peter that says, I am a chosen generation, it does give me so much joy. So much joy, I just begin to laugh and say, Devil, shut up. No matter what I'm going through, 
I will just be saying those words to myself, confessing those words to myself. And no matter whether there was, I will not be, I will not be downcast. No way. That's why the Bible says there's always a lifting for a child of God. But first and foremost, we must know our value. God has not called us to seek Him in vain. Jesus' death over you and I is not in vain. But we must know our value in Him to be able to blossom and flourish spirit, soul, and body. You know, the Bible says in the book of uh, 3 John 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. It means your soul, my soul, must prosper. How our soul prosper? Nothing else. The word of God. That's how our soul prospers. You give time to the word of God. You study the word of God. You give time to fellowship with God. You study. That's how our soul prospers. When our soul prospers, every other thing follows. You know the Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, Unto him that is able to do, exceeding abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. That is the key. What power works in you and I? Let's know that power that works in us. Ephesians 1, chapter... Ephesians 1, from, let's say, 18. He says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Ah, I love reading it in King James. This is my Bible is amplified. Um, I love the King James of this scripture. Okay, okay, okay. The King James says that the eye of understanding being enlightened, that we may know the, the riches of the glory of his inheritance towards us that believe according to the working of the mighty power. When you raised him from the dead. To be able to have it. Flourishing and blows on me. You need to know. The second thing I said. In Christ. I know you are. I'm talking about what That's that's the love. You carry something. Together, he said, 